Ladies Benz, the TriStar junk. Duralast junk. Where is this thing made? What are we doing today? Need my glasses. I can't read anymore. Made in USA. I don't know. Hang on. Put my glasses on and I'll tell you what I'm doing here. Unless you want to try and guess. Got eye drops in my pocket. When I, walk, I was walking around for a week with something in my eye. I didn't know what it was. Dust, angel hair, who knows. So I was in Walmart and I walked by the eye center. I walked in and I said, can you just look in my eye with a magnifying glass? Like, don't make this too fancy and complicated and expensive. No, we've got to sign you in. I don't, I don't have insurance. Anyways, in 10 minutes after signing a bunch of papers, I'm in the office with a doctor. He looks in my eyeball and he says, you got a piece of steel in your eye. I'm talking small piece. Yeah, right in that eye. Like Jerry's DIY, but not quite as bad. Watch the video, what he did to himself. Anyhow, he anesthetizes my eye and pulls out a little shard of wire that looks like that little streak of grease, of red and tacky Lucas grease. He says, it's getting rusty. I better get it out of there. And you put some eye drops in to stop infection. And $25, please, I said. That's a good deal. 25 bucks to poke something out of my eye with a tool that he dropped on the floor. Didn't wash his hands. Uh, but what are you supposed to tell the doctor? Uh, excuse me? Uh, wash your hands. Anyways, back to work. So, we uh, drove this Mercedes from Phoenix to New York. And just pulling into New York State, it's 425 miles, 800 kilometers across the state, 750 kilometers. The idler, tensioner, idler bearing starts going... <laughs> like Morse code, but for mice. So, knowing that a new one is 125 bucks, they're even expensive on Rock Auto and they're made in China, I said, hmm, I'm not spending 125 bucks to buy a new tensioner when all I need is a new bearing in the idler pulley. And I said, this looks awfully much like a GM. So, I went to the local auto parts store, Dura Junk. And I bought one of these for 20 bucks. Guy says, what's it for? I said, I don't know, uh, 80, 93, uh, a, a 2001, a 5.73296. What kind of vehicle do you have, sir? I said, it's actually a Mercedes, but I'm not buying a $120 tensioner idler. So he gave me one of these, and I kept it handy. PRC. You know what PRC stands for? Right there on the seal. Wow, that's nice and focused. People's Republic of China. Yeah, they make nice things in China. Anyhow, I kept that hanging around, and I watched a video on YouTube, Sweet Project Cars, where he says, just pull off the little seal, which is right there, pops right off, and put some grease in your idler bearing. And I said, no shoot. The president may swear, but I don't. I know how to swear, I know all the four letter words. Anyhow, so I pulled off the seal and I put some grease in it and the squeaky, 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 squeak, 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 went away. <laughs> Don't laugh at my videos. Or I'll make you wash and wax this thing and vacuum the interior. Look at this. Lamp's loose. So I put some grease in it and uh, Ms. Hip Chick's been driving the Mercedes around town and it hasn't squeaked, squeaked, squeaked. So on Friday we decided we were going to go to the... West Springfield, Mass, Eastern States Expo, car parts, swap meet, blah, 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 blah. And we're driving down the road, and what do I hear? Oh, before we left, I said, I better put some grease in that bearing. Just because I didn't put the seal back, and the grease is kind of flinging out of it. So I packed in some grease. Some nice red Valvoline wheel bearing, high temperature, extreme pressure grease. And we're getting to Springfield, and what do I hear as we approach the Aroma restaurant for some nice Indian food that cost $18.10 for two? I hear squeak, 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 squeak. I said, uh oh, we got a problem. We got 45 more miles, 80 kilometers to go to the Airbnb that we stayed at. It was real nice. And oy vey. So we limped along at 40 miles an hour on the Mass Pike. And we made it to the Springfield show, and I bought a bunch of junk that Miss Chick just brought into my shop. Tools, no car parts, I got enough car parts. And I bought some grease and some tools, and I greased it all up, and we made it back. Stopped a couple times, and I 
put some grease in. It's not too hard to get to. On the E320, it doesn't have an engine-driven fan, curiously. Same motor, but this has got an engine-driven fan and two electric fans. So it's a bit easier to change on the E320 when it seized a couple years ago after, after Billy and I drove it back from California to Maine. Took it out the next year, and on the way to New York City, it seized up. I heard it rattling a bit and didn't pay attention to it, and it seized up and melted the belt a little bit, but I bought a new one, and there's the old one. So, there's the long story. If you like long stories on YouTube, here's one. So I drilled this thing apart, and it's not easy to drill those rivets. They are hardened rivets. Think Corvair flywheel rivets. I drilled the rivets, didn't do the best job, because you can't stay centered. You'll see right through there. But I put some bolts in with some nylocks and some Permatex thread locker, and I tightened it up real tight. And the bearing, which is inside these two halves, if you have a plastic pulley, you can't change the bearing because the plastic is molded around it. The bearing came from the Corvair show because my buddy Spike Punk at one point told me, he said, that bearing is the same as the GM front alternator bearing that was used from, what, 1963 when they went to alternators and 65 on the Corvairs, all the way up to the mid-late 80s when they went to that stupid little alternator with the bearings that have nuclear meltdown, especially that back one. They had a nice needle bearing in the back. They went to this ball bearing, bearing, and it doesn't last. For some reason, it heats up, case cracks. So this bearing that was in this housing, which I have at my abode, was really chopped up real bad from the E320 that's in there. So I put a new Corvair bearing in, Chevrolet bearing, which fits in a Mercedes alternator, <laughs> fits in a Mercedes idler pulley. I happened to have been at the Corvair show, and the guy had a bunch made in Canada for three or four dollars each. This one's made in Japan. So I rebuilt this one, put it together, put some Loctite on it. I was gonna change the whole tensioner, but you gotta put a little screw in it or a nail if it comes from the whatever factories that make it and I thought of putting this inside and I was turning it and anyways, the belt came off. I'm gonna put it back on with the name facing forward like I always do because that's just my OCD. I don't have too much of it, but we all have a bit of it. Seven minutes and 26 seconds, you watching? Good, thank you. So I'm going to put this rebuilt one back, and you can't put it on with the bolts facing towards the engine because they hit the casting. So I'll put it this way. It's just clear. Just, just, just. So I'm going to put that together, put the belt on, put the upper radiator hose back on, and crank this baby up. It's funny because when we bought this thing, there's signs that this idler, the top one, went real bad and I have a receipt or I saw on Carfax that this top one was changed and 5,000 miles later that one went. Should have changed them both I suppose. There's also one in the alternator front and back, one in the air conditioner. These are dry bearings that are greased from the factory and if you watch Sweet Project Cars videos, it pops off that seal and fills it up with silicone grease. Well, I did it but what's kind of surprising is even though this thing was going squeak, 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 squeak. If you stick your finger in it, it's actually quiet. Stop making squeak, 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 squeak noises with the door. I'm trying to make squeak, squeak, squeak. Listen. This thing is butter smooth. Even though it was going squeak, 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 you could hear the little balls trying to rotate in the race and then catch up and slow down, but it's nice and butter smooth now which is really surprising. I would have thought that that would have been more mangled. Anyways, I saved it. I paid attention to the noises. I should have changed it before we left on a trip, but I didn't want to deal with taking off the belt because you got to put a 12 millimeter, so 10 millimeter on that Torx to release the tension. Then you got to put something in there and it's not easy to do when it's underneath. So see how this thing goes back together. I don't have a tripod for my camera. I suppose I should get one because my hand is getting cold holding my junk LG V10 phone, which the memory's always full in. So I'm going to pause this thing and put it back together and crank that baby up and bring this PRC. i got my glasses on now. Let's see where this is made. In Mexico, imported by in, uh, Idler Pulley. In USA, distributed by... Made in USA. Ha 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 ha. It should say of local and global parts because the stamping may have been stamped in USA. Maybe. But the bearing says, or at least the seal says, read it right there. P 
PRC, People's Republic of China. They make everything there now. I went to the Springfield car show and swap meet at Eastern States. I bought all kinds of made in USA tools, old stuff, dollar here, dollar there. Nice stuff, not like these swing bars that are made in China. They make nice ones. Made in USA tools, made in USA, made in USA, made in USA. Had this forever, made in China. Made in USA, there's the old fine tooth craftsman ratchets. You buy these on eBay right now. They're not cheap, 20, 25 bucks each. It used to be 12 or $15 when Sears used to sell them, but they stopped selling this fine tooth in the stores many, many, many years ago, back in the 80s or 90s. They, sold, they sell this one with the reverse lever over here, which has its advantages. This, this one, when, you, when you're undoing something, like I was in the junkyard in Georgia with my buddy in South Carolina, it backed into the bolt and we couldn't reverse it because the lever was up against the frame. Well, that was one struggle. It must have taken an hour to get off my nice ratchet, but I did get it off. Couldn't turn it this way because it kept loosening and getting tighter. Couldn't go the other way because you couldn't reverse it. I think someone lent me a hacksaw and I cut some bracket or something so we could move the suspension. I saw it happening and that was a bad day. So anyways, I'm going to pause this and I'm going to put this back together and see if I don't screw anything up. I'm going to spin this alternator and see how the bearing sounds. Without making noise. Let's see, because this is how you tell. Stop. Oh, got winter clothes on, even though it's a mild day today. Well, this seems all right. Same dry bearing in the alternator, same one in the air conditioner. This one seems nice too. That's the compressor I'm turning. There's the idler on top of the compressor shaft. That doesn't engage until you turn on the AC. So I'm going to pause this and be back in a minute. So here's the hard part. <laughs> I can't remember how it goes on and I took a picture of it. So this will go across the top and then down the back and I forget. Let's go take a look. In my dilapidated building. It's got more water inside than there is outside. Everything's melting into my building. Oh, turn the light on. Look at that. Come on. I can really kill my battery. So, goes around the alternator, goes up top, that small idler. Oh, I never remember as soon as I walk out of here. Look at the corrosion from just sitting in a damp building. Isn't that terrible? My beautiful Mercedes with 437,000 miles that I can't drive till I get the. Uh, EGR light to go off. I've got some spare parts from a junkyard in San Antonio this past fall. So let's see if I can remember how this goes. I walk over to the other one and I totally forget what I've just looked at. All the way across from that idler to the power steering, around the air conditioner, around the crankshaft. I'm going to forget. You know how that goes. Maybe I should make a schematic. I have a photograph of it in my phone, but I can't touch my phone because YouTube will stop. You do anything except turn the lamp on and it stops recording. Of course, I've now forgotten what I just looked at a minute ago. <laughs> oh man, I better make a diagram of this. Or I'll have Miss Hip Chick take a photograph of it. All right, I didn't put the camera upside down this time, but I went and made a, an image. Stop. Took the license plate from my 93 Turbo Turtle from Oregon. This thing came here in 2008 or 2009. Wow, it's still parked, needs a motor. Anybody have a 6.5 mechanical injection motor? I have an electronic injection, but I prefer just to swap in a mechanical injection. I'm not bother taking apart the electronic one, change the pump, big job. Anyways, I made a diagram. <laughs> so there's the alternator, goes all the way across the top. Wraps around the, let's see, power steering, then around the air conditioner, then goes all the way across the bottom, wraps around the crankshaft, then goes all the way back, wraps around the idler that I just replaced, then goes all the way back across the top of the water pump, and back to the place, yeah, the water pump's right there, right there, back to the place of the beginning. So as soon as I made this diagram, I have no photographic memory, I never had, never will. And I've got that almost on, and I can't hold this camera. I need a tripod or a 
magnetic mount stick right here like some guys do. You see these cars driving around with cameras everywhere. That's what GoPros are good for, but you got to edit it on the computer. i got things to fix. What's doing in my shop? I've got tin coming off here and squirrels in the roof. i got a Honda that came in. A friend of a friend went off the road into a ditch and pulled the wheel, pulled the wheel out of the transfer case, the axle, and who knows what's underneath here, but I've got to work on that. I've got a Cadillac, friend's Cadillac, got my Corvairs, got my Hyundai, got a Honda, I got the Suburban from Phoenix with the motor half put to together, got piles of junk, my sandblast cabinet I had for 30 something years, Corvair parts, water leaks, rotten wood, this place is a disaster, gotta fix up so much stuff here. I cleaned up the corner so I can get this Honda in, just got tons of junk. But, back to work. Are you chuckling at me, Miss Hip Chick? Yes, I am. Yeah, well, for good reason. So I can pop this belt back on now and just need two hands to do it. Let's see if I put the phone here. Where's the lens on the, that side? Nope. Put it over there. Nope. Yeah, I need a tripod mount. I need a lot of things. Let's try that. Where's my hand, huh? You're not going to see much, and the camera's going to rotate as soon as I jar it slightly. There. That's on. Make sure I'm engaged in all the pulleys. What videos have I been watching on YouTube? I watch Sweet Project Cars once in a while, and I watch A Road Less Traveled, which is Restore Car is in Oregon. The guy restores pre-1940s Stutzes and V12 Cadillacs and Lincolns and all kinds of interesting, big, expensive stuff. And he takes them from under-restored or improperly restored and messed up wrecks and makes them into these trailer queens that are worth huge money, but you can't, you can't, you can't drive them. It just hurts to drive them. They're so perfect. They're just too nice. So, I think I put this all back together. I'm going to check the strength of my antifreeze, even though it was already... Oh, look at this. Yep. This antifreeze does not look very strong. Well, it was minus 10 here. Minus 23 Celsius. It didn't freeze up, or maybe it got a little mushy. All right, that's what went on the other Mercedes. I have to buy a new one. I was stuck. All I needed really was this. Too bad, 120 bucks, but I could have spent 20. These do break, the springs crack the housing, but I guess all new parts are the best thing. So in a minute we'll crank this baby up. I'll pause you for a second. Why? All right, everything's put back together. I gotta put a tie wrap on the hose because the bracket snapped off dry. And uh, oh! <laughs> I finally ha can drive in peace and quiet again. Yeah, I gotta put the coolant back in. Actually, I have to check. I don't know if that coolant's strong yeah. enough. It didn't freeze. So everything's put back together and tightened up, and I tightened a couple of hose clamps, and, and I got lots of- And gotta go. Yeah. Oh, there's my sockets. I was wondering where they went. You do want dinner tonight, don't you? <laughs> Potatoes, carrots, no. celery. How about crock pot chili or something? Yeah, well, sounds good to me. get going, because it's okay Yeah, for me. yeah, sun's going down. Another beautiful day in hell. Crank that baby up, Miss Hip Chick. Yeah. Crank her up. Hope I didn't forget any parts. Oh, it's all right. I gotta take out the tools. Oh, yeah, right. oh, I'll show the people the tools that I bought. No, I put them away. Oh, there was lots of tools. I found one. a couple of bags. Oh, bag? that's from Chinese store. That's to take off the idler if it blows up. This is a junk to the back of the Crank that baby up. Oh, those are washers for the license plates. I need to get a couple of screws. The container's broken, be careful. Well, put it back together in the right direction. It's working well, my GM alternator bearing made in Japan. Disengage, flux fan, disengage. We don't need those stinking flux fan. It's summertime. Yeah, right. Winter. All right, got some tooling to Crank that baby up. 